Welcome to another production of Park TV 16 Sports. Tonight we are on location in St. Louis Park, Minnesota at St. Louis Park High School bringing you Metro West Conference Girls Varsity Basketball featuring the home St. Louis Park Orioles taking on Benilde St. Margaret Red Knights and the Orioles have their work cut out tonight. Benilde, last time I checked, they're ranked number two in the state. They come in 16 and six against the seven and 13 Orioles. One interesting fact, the Red Knights are 500 in their last four, so they've had a couple losses. They're looking to get and keep on the winning track and keep their status as the number two team. I'm Robert Christensen, glad you're with us and we're about to begin. St. Louis Park has their two best players injured and that's gonna hamper them tonight. Let's see how they get off the gate here. And right away, Olivia Olson, number one. I think the seventh ranked best girls high school basketball player in the country, averaging 23, 24 points per game. Had a shot there, but we're tied at zero. Just five seconds into it. Again, glad you're with us. And from the outside, the lefty drills it. That is number 33, Kate Kasmer. She averages 6.2 a game, and she's got nearly half that already off the bat. And now Macy Alexander from the outside off. And Kendall McGee off to the races, the sophomore. She's averaging 21 a game as well. And you can see why on that running jump shot, the sophomore having started all last year. This is my first opportunity to see the Red Knights. And that was a nice play by Kendall McGee. Now Evelyn Schmitz, the leading scorer for the Orioles. She averages 14.7 a game. Her running layup off the rim and in. Now underneath Casper with the two off the rim and out of bounds. And that will be out of bounds off Kastner and the Red Knights. So possession to the Orioles. We look at the replay and look at that sweet left-handed shot from three-point land by Kate Kastner. Score five nothing here and a full court press by the Red Knights. They are gonna put the hurt on the Orioles here early. Evelyn Schmitz comes in, takes a hit and draws the foul and a good call I felt as she got hit on the body and she will go to the line and shoot two. That stops the clock with 17.06 remaining. Schmitz again, 5'7", junior guard. First free throw, hits the front of the rim, bounces off. Orioles still looking for their first point. Still early though, just in the first minute. Nice relaxed free throw off the front of the rim. Rebound into the hands of number three. That's Mackenzie Wells for the Red Knights. Now into the front court, Kendall McGee. Directing traffic, Kastner runs the baseline. Now Olsen stops in, bounce pass underneath by Olivia Olsen and well done by Olsen as she hit. Mackenzie Wells, the senior, for the layup. Nice mature pass there by Olivia Olsen. And now at the front court, look at the turnaround dribble by Evelyn Schmitz and delivers it. Oh, and what a shame that didn't go in. What a great athletic play. Now Olsen into the front court behind the dribble herself, driving into the corner. Kastner with that left-handed three-point shot, and she has got that shot down. That is very dangerous if left wide open and the score just like that 10 nothing in the first now into the front court number 10 that is Lauren Poshel and she is off the bench after the two injuries to Harden and Jordan we'll talk about that in a minute she's averaging 9.5 second leading score on the team and that is going to be an out of bounds off the Orioles and now the Red Knights will bring it back up with a 10 nothing lead here McGee into the front court to Olsen. Olsen now will look at, drive, spin, turn, shoot, and in. This Red Knight team is much improved from last year, and they were really good last year. And you can just see the maturity and how they are. They used to be in a hurry last year, and now the maturity is really starting to show. And now Olsen has her head up, looking, bounces off the rim. Rebound goes off number three, Mackenzie Wells, the senior. And possession will go towards Park as we look at the replay. Look at that spin move, the shot, the body control by Olivia Olsen. And just mature is the, what I want to say. I say that uh, very positively. Okay, now into the front court. 
Alexander can't quite get it. Olsen with the rebound into the front court. As we approach 15 minutes to go, now in the corner to 24, Lumpkin. She nails a three, and there's gonna be a timeout by Arsenio Richardson. Our score, 15 zip here with 15, 14 to go. These two teams met earlier in the year as we look at the replay, and here's Olivia Olsen. Look at her head is up, looking for the play, comes in and sees Lumpkin wide open. And I think her overall point average per game is a little less than last year, but look at how well she can pass. And that is really the no, new prototype, I think, for high-end basketball as she moves on into the college in the next couple years here. Point guards are six feet tall, and she is starting to look like a point guard. They can do it all. They can post up and run the offense, and she is really starting to show her assist ability as well, showing a well-rounded game, and that is something a little bit new that I see off of Olsen this year. Red Knights look primed for a big run to the state tournament this year. They're gonna have to run into Hopkins. That's who's been their nemesis in the sections. Hopefully we'll be able to bring you that game if they meet up in the sections. But I like this Red Knight team and I like the Oriole team too. And I should talk about the injuries. Their two best players, Chantel Harden. We were here for it in December. She hurt her knee. She looks like she's on the men, but not ready to play. And then just last Friday, Jordan McMahon came down on her right ankle and she's now in a boot in on crutches. And together they average 27 rebounds a game. So we look at this replay by the Orioles. And the block by Olsen, well done. All right, Schmitz with the throw in. But really unfortunate just to be able to not watch those two play. They're both very good players, entertaining, and to have them not out here is a shame but it is part of the game injuries and uh, we do miss them as there does their team and their fans of course. And all right, that shot by number one, Ruby Massey, rebound, Olsen underneath, 17 nothing, 14.42 to go. Schmitz now to number 10, Poshlin, and she takes a shot from the outside off the back rim, rebound to number 33, Kate Kastner, and now Olivia Olsen running the point. Drives and draws the foul. Oh, they're gonna call her with the push and the little bit with the push. That was a touchy call, I felt. Let's see here the replay prior to that underneath to Olsen. Look at the nice feed from Kapsner. Red Knights on all cylinders, full court press with a 17 point lead. They must be getting ready for the sections here. Look at Sierra Lumpkin, the senior on Evelyn Schmitz, that's a good matchup. Schmitz not afraid to take her on here. She can really dribble, look at that. Keeping her head up, stops, pops back and gets that. You will not see a more big time play than that on any level. And she had maybe one of the best defensive players in the state all over her and for her to do that, that play was suitable for framing for Evelyn Schmitz. Hopefully when we get a break, we can see that one again. And now she's got the ball. She's really gonna have to pick up the slack here with Jordan and Harden out. And she drives a little hard off the backboard. Now McGee into the front court, her behind the back. She looks on the side, gets double team, turns back around. Now finds Kastner all alone. Massey tries to get there and she did cause the miss. And a rebound to Ellie Frank, the seventh grader. Good to see her in there. She is the future. She comes in and lays it in on the right hand and she can cause problems. Good to see her in there now with 13.20 to go and Orioles now showing signs of life. Five points on the board, they're down 14. McGee into the front court, Olsen now at the point. She drives, comes in and a whistle and they're gonna call a foul on, it looks like Macy Alexander is gonna get the call. And here it is. Look at the dribble here behind the back, the crossover, the step back shot from three point land with someone in her face. You can't beat that. Awesome, awesome play there. All right, the free throw made by Olsen makes it 20 to five. 13.08 remaining, first half. Glad you're with us on Park TV 16 Sports. We're streaming live on YouTube and at the line, the seventh ranked 
best player in America, Olivia Olsen. Second free throw attempt here. Off the rim, rebound. Great offensive rebound underneath by number 14, Mira Wismer, just a ninth grader out there battling for that rebound, and those are very coveted. You get those rebounds. It didn't result in points for Red Knights, but that was a great rebound in between two Orioles. And there she is, putting on the full court press on Schmitz. Poor Evelyn Schmitz. They're putting everybody on her. She gets by her, though. Schmitz is undeterred, comes in, tries to lay up. Olsen steals it away, but it gets in the hands of number 33. That is Isabella Miller off the bench, the sophomore. She's also very skilled on the running layup, as I remember from just last Friday when we were here against Chaska. There's Isabella Miller, turns, drives. That's usually where she likes to shoot it. Nice bounce pass in to Poshlin, and she puts it up there and can't get the touch to go. Olsen with the rebound. She's got her head up into the front court. Looking, looking, tries to drive, scoops it up and in. Beautiful play by Olivia Olsen. And now Ellie Frank with Schmitz. Oh, they're just, Schmitz does, can't quite save it. Little miscommunication there by Frank and Schmitz. Understandable as they haven't played together in tandem very often this year, but they'll get it down. Nevertheless, an unfortunate turnover. And now Kendall McGee throws it in to Olsen. McGee now. She looks a lot more mature out there. Look at her go in. She kind of used the elbow to get some space. Shot goes off. Olsen, though, with the rebound. Puts it up, can't get it, gets her own rebound. Puts it back up and in. And those offensive rebounds are valuable. Now, into the front court, number 10, Lauren Poshlin. And she forces it up there just a little bit, a little bit flat, and off the rebound. Olsen underneath to number five. That was Zahara Bishop, sophomore, couldn't get it to go. Ball out of bounds. Possession to the Red Knights. 11.41 remaining here, first half. Substitutions now. Miller will step out along with Massey for the Orioles. Coming in, number 24 is Stacy Spates. So we have Spates, Frank. Polishin. Macy Alexander. And Ellie Frank Schmitz for the Orioles. Let's see, and for the Red Knights, there's some substitutions on their end as well. Olsen will take a break. Coming in number 24, that's Sierra Lumpkin. So we got Lumpkin, also number four checked in, Sydney Friedley. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, just an eighth grader. So with this kind of lead, and with the unfortunate injuries, it's nice to see the Red Knights go into their bench to give some varsity experience. Also very benevolent on the coach and the Red Knights. They don't need to run up the score as much as they cannot. They can hold off. Now we got a foul on the Orioles on the arm. That'll send McGee to the line with 11.25 remaining. 19 point lead here for the Red Knights. Kendall McGee at the line. She's averaging 21.4 a game. Now Schmitz will take a well-deserved break for the Orioles as Massey comes right back in and she gets the rebound. Nicely done by Ruby Massey. Great rebound. She comes in the front court, tries to hit Alexander and underneath she does. Alexander now with the turnaround jump shot off the board, the rim and off. McGee now with the rebound quickly into the front court. Looking to do it. Spates taps it away, but now it ends up in the hands of number five, Bishop. She drives, draws contact and a foul. I think it's gonna be on Ellie Frank. Yes, it is with the body. So that will send number five, Zahara Bishop, to the line. As we look at McGee, save that ball from underneath. And Bishop comes in and draws the foul. And now her shot is good. She rattles that in. 30, no, what's the score? 28, 26 to five. 21 point lead with 11.06 to go. Second attempt by Zahara Bishop, the sophomore. She averages 5.8 a game, and nice rebound by Spade. She catches up with it. Nice hustle, great rebound. Now Schmitz will bring it up. Not as much pressure this time down the floor. Now Massey. Oh, and the reach in by McGee. Good call by the official, I felt. McGee has quick hands, but this time I did hear a little bit of the slap from way up here in the top of the risers in the gymnasium. 
Clock stopped at 10.54. Spates to throw it in. Gets it into Schmitz. Lumpkin on her. Man-to-man -man defense now. Schmitz, Massey, so guard. Central offense, Frank comes in, gives it up to Schmitz, and she delivers the nice mid-range jumper from the side. Those are not easy shots to make, and look at Frank making things happen there. And that's what they gotta do. They gotta kinda play Ja Morant style, don't they? Especially with not a lot to lose here. Go have fun and play basketball. And that's exactly what they were doing right here. Watch Ellie Frank make this play happen. She crosses over, left, hands up, almost was gonna shoot it, but then right at the last second, able to send Schmitz to her left, delivered to a wide open shot, and she drilled it. I like that combination out there with Frank and Schmitz. They'll be together next year as well. Now into the front court for the Red Knights. Number four, Sydney Friedley. Now Lumpkin, nice bounce pass underneath. Beautiful pass by Lumpkin to number three, Wells, but good defense by the Orioles. And then number 14, Mira Wiesmer gets the ball and drives it and banks it in off the backboard. 28-7 our score. Schmitz now into the front court. Lumpkin on her. Ellie Frank in the corner, Macy Alexander, and Schmitz comes in and gets it to go. She's starting to get comfortable out there. That's what the Orioles need. 28-9, they're within 19. Now to the front court, that is Sydney Friedley. She comes in on her own, drives it, layup off the board, and they're gonna call a foul on Macy Alexander, I think. Yes, 32. Be the fourth team foul. Watch this sequence. We look at number 14. Wismer come in. Oh, that was the previous play by Wismer. Nice lay in by her. Now Olivia Olson checks back in. A throw in underneath for the Red Knights coming up. Man to man defense being shown by the Orioles. 9.23 remaining first half. All right, we're getting everybody set. All right, here we go. Lumpkin looking, looking, looking. Gets it into Olsen right underneath. The dump pass to number three, Wells, and she lays it in easily. Now Schmitz looks down the court, and Alexander was open for a minute. She fought back for it, gets it to Poshlin. She puts it in with the left-handed lay-in. Nicely done. And that's what the Orioles need to do, play a lot more freewheeling, but within reason. And now Olsen from way outside, and that misses everything. So ball goes back to the Orioles, 30 to 11. Here's that play, and then Macy Alexander did not give up on it, and that is the lesson there. It looked like a sure interception. She was open for a minute there, now Schmitz gives it up to the Lumpkin. Now Olsen comes in, high stepping it, lays it in, no foul called. Schmitz now quickly back in, Macy trying to get him, they got a two on one briefly. Massey comes in, lowers the shoulder and puts it in. Contact was drawn, no call. I thought that was a good no call, and look at Massey. Playing tough, lowering the shoulder, going up strong, banking it in and in, beautiful. Now, here comes Paulschelin. Big two on one break comes in, fakes it, oh! I think Olivia Olsen, a big intimidation there. That would have got the crowd ignited for sure. Now Schmitz with another steal, two in a row, and now they're off to the races, two on one. With Paulson, she lays it up and gets it to go. 32-15. Orioles playing their best basketball in a month, I believe, right there. They are really starting to reinvent their identity here with the loss of their two beloved best players. But a new identity is being born from the ashes as we watch number three, Mackenzie Wells, drill a three. But for the Orioles, it's all about learning to play together without their two best players, and they're starting to figure it out here. You can see the evidence right before your eyes, and it's just as entertaining as anything. Now Schmitz, and they're going against the number two team in the state. Schmitz drills it. Look at the confidence in Evelyn Schmitz. So inspiring. Now Benil, nice move there by Zahara Bishop. She drives the lane, drops the ball, and no call on that. Good no call. 
Schmitz now coming back the other end. Look at her ability to handle the ball. Astounding. All right, now Ruby Massey, top of the key. 37-18, our score. 6.53 remaining first half. Now Isabella Miller is checked in. And the Red Knights are waiting for that type of offense where they're panning it off at the top of the key. And Lumpkin takes advantage, drives the length of the court, lays it in. 39-18. Now Paul Shalin. Paul Shin. I'm not pronouncing that right, drills a three. And I better start pronouncing it right because she is a heck of a player out there. Now Olsen drives. Oh, you know, tough call there in my opinion. Olsen looked like she was forcing it a little bit, but did draw contact, but watch this. Schmitz, just cool, the cucumber, just the step back three is so well performed. Olsen now with her free throw attempt, rattles in and out. Substitutions, Miller steps out, Schmidt steps out. I'll tell you, to fight the score, this is entertaining basketball, folks. Glad you're with us on Park TV 16 Sports. I am thoroughly enjoying watching this Orioles team start to figure it out. All right now, Massey, and it's just great watching the Red Knights. I mean, come on, they are really a well-oiled machine. So many superlatives we could attach to this team. State tournament has got to be the goal for sure. Okay, now turnover against the Orioles. 6.09 to go. Throw in by number four, Sydney Friedley. Just an eighth grader out there getting tons of varsity experience tonight. Good for her and the team. There she is on the left wing. Top of the key to number three, Wells. Now to the near side, that's Kapsner. Now McGee at the top of the key. Looks to drive right. She'll come in. Power move up, can't get it to go. Good combination defense by Miller and Massey. And now to the front court, Ellie Frank. She had space on the right, she drives left, tried to go up, and a nice clean block by Kastner. Good penetration though by Frank. And now a turnover, good defense by Massey coming up number one and forcing the issue. Watch here, comes Frank, comes in. And that's when you learn you're at the varsity level for Frank. but what a great experience for her, just a seventh grader and just getting this experience. She's gonna learn what to do the next time she's in that situation. Now, outside, Spates just misses by a tad, I felt, just off the front of the rim and out of bounds. So possession to the Red Knights, 40 to 21, 19 point differential, 5.24 to go. And that is Kendall McGee bringing into the front court, averaging 24 a game. Think about that. Both her and Olsen who just got it underneath. Now she sees Kastner outside. She's got that sweet three-point shot. It was hot early, but she's missed the last couple. And look at Polishin getting the rebound, looking ahead to Miller. Accepts the pass. She'll take the three from outside. And oh, in and out. And rebound, Polishin running jumper. Oh, doesn't go in and out. Now McGee with the rebound. She'll dribble it up into the front court on the fast break. One on one, comes in, drives it up and gets it to go. Nice touch by Kendall McGee on the running jumper with traffic and now back down, polish in. No contact, Frank with the rebound. Look at the hustle by the Orioles. Massey getting in, no, Poshlin getting in there. McGee gets the rebound, now she's into the front court. And she'll take the running jumper off the back of the rim, rebound. McGee again, Isabella Miller comes away with it. Gets it ahead to Massey, they've got numbers, it briefly. Now Olsen gets back in on defense. The shot by Massey, high off the glass and in. That was pro caliber, how high off the glass that was. She must be good at geometry to figure it out that one. You don't see him go that high off the glass often, but she had that down and went right in. Great entertaining basketball, you can't deny it. Right here on Park TV 16 Sports. Olsen underneath muscles it up, can't get it to go. Rebound, Polishin. Polishin now with her head up. Coming down, back behind the dribble. She takes a big three from outside, off the rim. Rebound to Wells. Now way ahead to Olsen. They catch her down there, she gets it to go. So they gave them a little piece of their own medicine or a taste. 
but really well played game here, highly entertaining. 44-23, our score. Miller from the outside gets it to go. Great shot. Side coaches to the Earls, urging them to get back so they didn't get burned. That was a big, big problem for them against Chaska on Friday night. They definitely learned their lesson as they are using that same tactic against the Red Knights. And now the driving layup by Kastner draws the foul. Was that Olsen? No, that was number four, excuse me, Friedley. And now look at this right here, high off the glass, took the contact way up there and in. Well-conceived shot, very creative. Good stuff. Boy, that's a nice looking shot there by Sydney Friedley. Boy, the, all these kids now have such great form. Really entertaining stuff. Okay, now Fridley with her second. 3.07 remaining. First half, 45-25 our score. Boy, just perfect looking shot. They got two lefties on the Red Knights, I see, with Caster. There might be more, but those two I've noticed. Now Schmitz back in the court with Polishin. Polishin, so it's guard central here, which is what they gotta do. Just run and have fun here. Down low, Massey! Oh, they did get her with the charge there. She knew it, but you gotta do something against the bigger, more talented team here. But down low, she took the thing. Yeah, tried to create some separation, but right there in front of the referee, good call. 17 foul on the Orioles, so that means the Red Knights are in the bonus. Now McGee behind the back, underneath the drop off to number 14. Wismer, and she didn't get the first one to go, but stuck with it, got the rebound, went back up, drew the foul, and the and one as she made that basket. So 48-25, 2.37 remaining first half. Macy Alexander checks in for Isabella Miller. She had that beautiful looking three a few moments ago. And now Wismer. Off the rim, Olsen able to steal that rebound, the turnaround, in and out. She's been a little cold tonight. Now rebound into Polishin. Polishin takes the three from outside. Rebound, look at Frank sticking her nose in there, taking a little bit of a bout and out of bounds off the Red Knights. Look at the energy by Frank and the Orioles. And Polishin will go to the line on the foul call against Olsen, Polishin at the line. Team fourth for the Red Knights. Polishin averaging 9.9 .9 a game, and she's got a nice looking shot as well, doesn't she? Polishin, the senior. Olsen will take a seat for the Red Knights. As Polishin gets that one to go. Now, Kendall McGee. Brings up the ball, gives it up to Lumpkin now at the top. She'll drive left, lay in from far distance, and Schmitz with the rebound. She's quickly bringing it up the left side, Friedley on her, behind the back dribble, loses her, hits Polish in from outside, her ball in and out. Massey can't quite get it. Wismer gets the rebound. Outlet pass to the left side, now back underneath to Zahara Bishop, can't get it to go, and the rebound by McGee counts with 1.47 to go. 23 point lead, 50 to 27. Now to the front court, Evelyn Schmitz. Massey drives left, gives it up. Polish in, passes up the shot, drives in the lane. The running jumper hook is good for number 10, Lauren Polish in. Lighten it up here in the first half for the Orioles. Now at the top of the key, number four, Sydney Friedley. Friedley now. Picks up her dribble, Bishop loses it momentarily, regains the dribble, now she'll, and a timeout called from the bench by the Red Knight coaching staff, and that stops the clock with 1.16 remaining. And we are nearing the end of the girls basketball season. Tomorrow night we'll be bringing you Red Knight girls hockey playoff style against Edina Parade Stadium. We won't be streaming live, but you can check it probably the next day on YouTube. 
And if you want to come down to Parade Stadium, I recommend you come down there. But tonight we're talking about basketball and look at the Red Knights schedule coming up. We're nearing the end. They got three games after tonight. Chan Hansen, that could be an interesting one. Chan Hansen is six and four in the conference. And then at Waconia, then Orno. They already played Chaska and they took a defeat to Chaska and they are leading the conference. Metro West actually, Chaska is at 10 and 0. 21 and 0 one overall, so I don't think they're in the same section, so they may not run into them until the state tournament. But just three games remaining for the Red Knights, two at home, one on the road, and then section playoffs, always exciting. It's already mid-February, March Madness is kinda here, February, March Madness. All right, timeout over. Orioles are already out on the court, ready to go. 1.16 on the clock, remaining half number one. Red Knights bring out McGee, number four, Friedley, Bishop, number five, 14, Wismer, and Lumpkin in the far corner. Okay, McGee now gives it up to number four, the nice pass underneath. McGee from way outside, misses everything, rebound, polishing, and she's off to the races, blows by three Red Knights, comes in over to the right side to Frank. Frank now pulls up. Back to Polish in, she's open, she takes the three off the front of the rim. Now, rebound by Lumpkin to number four, Friedley, Friedley to the right corner. Bishop, thought that could have been a little bit of a travel, it would have been a ticky-tack travel, I guess. Just thought she kind of jumped on both feet there. Now McGee, look at her handle the ball. Now back to Bishop, she takes the big outside shot off the rim, rebound, Massey. And there is Wismer. Tying her up and possession arrow favors the Orioles. 32 seconds even remaining. Full court pressure being displayed by the Red Knights. Now Schmitz and they had a little bit of token pressure. Schmitz brings it in. Behind the back dribble, drives to the left corner, gives it up to Polishin. Now Macy Alexander at the free throw line. Now here comes Massey, drives. Tough shot from a tough angle into the hands of McGee. Into the front court quickly, running jump shot, good. 10 seconds remaining. Now Schmitz into the front court, intercepted by Wismer. Now Bishop with two seconds. She stops, pops off the back rim as the buzzer sounds, signifying the end of half number one. So after one half complete, our score 52-29. Come on back for the second half. It costs so little to teach a child to love and so much to teach him to hate. These simple but profound words from our founder have been guiding Boys Town in our work with kids and families for over a century. Today, the ideals of equality and respect are at the core of each parenting strategy you'll find at boystown.org slash parenting. Whether you're a parent, grandparent, or guardian of a toddler, teen, or someone in between, we've got parenting guides, articles, videos, tools, and quick tips on a variety of subjects, all developed with love by Boys Town's experts. Teach me respect. Teach me patience. Teach me kindness. Teach me love. Visit boystown.org slash magnet today to receive your Teach Love Magnet. It's a great reminder that the change we want to see in our world begins at home, and Boys Town is there to help along the way. Welcome back to Park TV 16 Sports on Location. We got Eminence Front going on as we're about to begin the second half. I'm Robert Christensen, you're watching Park TV 16 Sports, second half, Metro West Girls Varsity Basketball. Glad you're with us on Park TV 16 Sports. And in the front court, that is Kendall McGee for the Red Knights. They'll be going right to left this time. Orioles got off to a really slow start. As we mentioned, their two best players are hurt. Looks like for the year, and they, but since then, they've started to figure it out as McGee gets the first two to go. Red Knights out of the gate quickly here. Just underway here, second half. Again, glad you're with us on Park TV 16 Sports. We're streaming live on YouTube, and that is Massey live. And Evelyn Schmitz has been putting on a show tonight. A little cold coming out of the halftime break there, but she'll warm up. 
Arsenio Richardson, the head coach, doing an excellent job. Just devastating injuries this year to Jordan and Harden. Chantel Harden and Jordan McMahon. Now from the outside, Kastner, just as she started half number one, drills a three early in half number two. Now Alexander takes the long pass and can't quite haul it in. Nice look by Massey. She was open, just couldn't bring it in. So turnover and Red Knights with the ball, just under 17 to go. Second half, Red Knights come in 16 and six overall, eight and two in the conference. Chaska 10 and 0 ahead of them. Now, Kendall McGee comes in with a nifty layup with the left hand. Boy, the athleticism on both teams, outstanding. Now Polishin has had a great first half. Keeps the dribble, tries to get it down to Macy Alexander. And with the steal, number three, Mackenzie Wells, quickly now to the front court. Olivia Olsen to Kendall McGee from outside. High, back, hard, off the back rim. Rebound, though, Kastner and Polishin fights her for it. Forces the tie up and that possession arrow favors the Orioles so nice effort by Polish and she'll come out now and Ellie Frank the seventh grader checks in early in the second half good to see her out there with Schmitz and Massey and Macy Alexander along with Stacy Spates so basically four guards out there in a the center now Frank the seventh grader showing no fear against Kendall McGee. Look at her go, tries to drive the lane, gets the baseline, can't quite get it to go. McGee with the rebound, quickly in the front court in her own right, now underneath. Lumpkin jumped, didn't know what to do, and they did call the travel. She was caught in no man's land. You can see the smile on her face, she knew it. She got caught, but not to say that that was not also great defense that caused that. And I think that was Massey there with her. So good defense by the Orioles, forces that turnover. 15.43 to go here, second half. We're at the St. Louis Park Gymnasium in St. Louis Park, Minnesota, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. You're enjoying it with us. Thank you. Now underneath to Kastner and the nice feed by Olivia Olsen with another assist by Olsen. As I was mentioning in half number one, she has really picked up that part of her game from my viewpoint and look at Schmitz. I told you she was gonna heat up. She delivers the three, she averages nearly 15 a game. She'll be close to that if not exceeding that by tonight. And look at Olsen, drive the lane, draws contact and gets that to go off the glass. Now Schmitz into the front court. Nice behind the back dribble. She is really smooth out there. Schmitz, number 30, drives with the running layup off the back rim. Rebound in the caster's hand. And she's got Lumpkin on her right wing. She steps back with the three, and that draws a little short and out of bounds. And now substitutions by both teams. Miller checking in along with Polishin for the Orioles. And did I catch who checked in? Number five, Zahara Bishop. And number 35 for the Red Knights, Josephine Naji. She averages 4.7 a game. Now into the front court for the Orioles. Coming up on 14 and a half minutes and a touch foul called on McGee. That'll be her second personal. Out of bounds throw in now for Stacy Spates. Now Polishin at the top of the key to Ellie Frank. She fakes left, now she decides to split the middle, comes in and gets it to go. That is what is possible for Ellie Frank. She's been trying to do that and she gets that one to go. Nice relaxed drive with the left hand with someone on her. And now the push off by number five, Zahara Bishop. She lowered the shoulder, extended the forearm there a little bit. Watch this play, Frank, she splits. Those two tall players, Lumpkin and Olsen, right between. She may have drawn some contact, but got that one to go. Fun to watch, folks. Hope you stay with us here. Great action. Now Polishin delivers just inside the three-point line. 63-36, 14 minutes remaining. 
fun, entertaining stuff. Now Olsen drives and can't get it to go. Rebound off of the, oh, I thought that went off the Red Knights, Naji. No, no protest here, but watch Paula Shin with the running jump shot as she got by McGee. Now the throw in for Bishop. Goes high up to McGee. Frank all over her. Now McGee takes the challenge. She'll drive in from the left. Goes to the right hand and nice touch by McGee. She's really learned to establish that touch and that's the maturity I've noticed as well. Not as hard off the board and rim. She's able to get that touch and let that ball just sort of settle in. Really well done by the sophomore. Now Spates for the Orioles on the left side. Massey directing traffic. Now Isabella Miller will try, comes in. That's her where she likes to shoot. And she drew the foul. And the Red Knight also, I think that was Najee, also took it in the face. And she's still down, holding her face. Still down. Let's see the replays. Massey drives. Gives it up to Miller. There's Najee on her. Miller does a spin move, then continues and goes up, and her elbow caught Najee. Maybe right on the nose as she is really feeling it. Oh, that can hurt. So we've been here for three girls' basketball games and three injuries. <laughs> We saw Harden go down in December, Jordan go down, and now a prolonged injury here is now we'll take the opportunity to look at the St. Louis Park upcoming schedule as they are nearing the end of the season. They have four to go, three at home, New Prague, Hopkins, and Bloomington Jefferson, and then in between at Chanhazen Park. Having a tough go of it after losing Harden and McMahon to injuries this year. They've just won one game in their last 10, dating back to a win at Shakopee. Much bigger school, one point on the road. Big win there. And now Najee, we don't show her on the screen. She was on her back, and now she's sitting up. I don't know, maybe a concussion-type situation as well. Yeah, it looks like she's about to stand up here. It's wise we don't show it, but she looks okay as she gingerly walks off. Maybe you can show it to your right of your screen as she, they're gonna bring her into the locker room and uh, do some evaluation or just have her sit on that chair there. They could be doing a concussion protocol and maybe check out that nose. Hopefully she'll be okay, but she does look a little stunned, so she'll take a seat. 13, 17 to go here, our score 65-36, 29 point lead, my math is right, and Isabella Miller at the line. She'll get two and she gets that one to go in after a, you know it can be hard to get up there and shoot a free throw after there's been a little bit of a delay like that. And I do see they have taken Najee into the locker room now, they're gonna walk her out, look at her more closely with more privacy, which I think is good but she seemed to be walking fine without any assistance. All right, back to live play here. 13, 17 to go, Olsen gonna throw it in. And unfortunately, I was distracted by Najee and there's some discussion here with Arsenio Richardson and the referees. Not sure what the disagreement is. My fault for not paying attention. All right, meanwhile, we have a substitution. Wells will come in, number three for McGee. And now Olsen will throw it in to number four, Sydney Friedley, and Friedley will bring it up. In the game for the Red Knights, the same lineup as before. Now into the corner, Bishop to puts the move on Spates. Spates stays with her, Bishop puts it up out of the rim, into the hands of Poshlin on the rebound, and she'll bring it up quickly. Spates on her left. Isabella Miller on her right, Poshlin behind the back, dribble, running jump shot off, hard off the board, into the hands of Olivia Olsen, and now she'll bring it up with a head of steam, coming right in, loose control, now gives it up to three, Wells, Wells now to Friedley, number four. Friedley now will set it up at the top of the key, 12.41 to go. Zahara Bishop now drives, gets pushed back by Poshlin, great defense here by the Orioles. Really impressive how they've conducted themselves tonight. Now at the top of the key, Friedley. Sydney now, this is the great defense. Look at 
Frank fighting number three, Wells, underneath. Unbelievable defense by Ellie Frank there. Going against almost twice her size, just fighting for position underneath. What a battle that was. 12-17 remaining. Now Schmitz checks in for Spates. Good minutes by Stacy Spates, I felt. Kendall McGee quickly back in. Lumpkin will have a seat. And now the throw in underneath by Bishop to uh, McGee at the top of the key. McGee pulls her dribble. Nice behind the back pass to Olsen. Can't get it to go. Ellie Frank there to disrupt that play. And now underneath. And are they going to call the foul on Miller? She holds her neck there. Miller will get the foul. It's her third team first. Three team fouls for the Red Knights. Miller now will come out. She got called with the foul, but it looked like she may have taken a blow to the noggin there. Now the throw in by Freed Lee, looking for Olsen underneath. Has to go up top to Bishop. Bishop with Schmitz on her. Bishop now looking to drive. Spin move. That could have been a travel, I felt. Now McGee. McGee now drives the baseline. She's got Massey on her. Can't force it in. Gets her own rebound. Puts it right back and in. Looking for the foul. Didn't get it. Great perseverance, though, by Kendall McGee. Now Schmitz on the other end, and she takes a hard hit there, but no call. Looked like she got all ball. She may have been hit by the body, but the referee was, I think, obstructed from seeing that. Good no call in the end, and now driving. Bishop gets that to go off the back rim and in. Now Schmitz with it. Our score, 69-37. 11.24 to go, Schmitz into the front court. She'll drive the left side and a foul away from the play by the referee. Gonna Bishop will get the foul underneath. It was away from the ball. And the referee up top saw it. Not sure what the call was for, but maybe some pushing and shoving. Didn't like what he saw, so that's the fourth team foul against the Red Knights throw in for Schmitz. Ooh, McGee, so cat-like quick. Almost stole that thing. Out of bounds, though. Throw in now again for Schmitz, this time deep in the corner. Not too many out, out of bounds plays set up for that location, but they get it in the Massey at the top of the key. Kasser out top. Tough, tight defense by the Red Knights. Poshlin lets one fly just short off the front of the rim. Nice touch on that, but now here comes Lumpkin on the left side. Looking to drive, comes all the way in and lets it go and in off the backboard for Lumpkin. Nice play. Now back the other way. Poshlin will come in with the scoop. Lay in. Great action back and forth. Now McGee brings it up with 10.50 to go. 71-39 underneath to Wismer in the lane. Ooh, three-point violations by both those Red Knights. I felt that they're camped there. They seem to be there quite a while. No call there, out of bounds. Favored the Red Knights. McGee to throw it in. There's Wells, now Lumpkin. Lumpkin behind and comes in and she drives. And oh, she got the travel call this time. She does a gymnastic move getting up there out of bounds. That looked painful. And she is hurting a little bit. She went in there strong and through the travel. And she's going to have to take a step and now stepping in. Here's that replay. Judge for yourself at home or wherever you are enjoying our broadcast. She comes in there. And they thought felt she took too many steps. Could have gone either way. It's hard to know. Sometimes when they pick up that dribble and when they've left it can be a very close call sometimes. Now Polishin from outside gets it to go. Big time three by Polishin. 42 points for the Orioles, 71 for the Red Knights. 29 point lead, 10-11 to go. McGee, look at her quick dribbling, comes right in off the board and in. That is big time, folks. Kendall McGee averaging 24 a game. Now Frank from way outside gets it to go. Let the threes fly, Orioles. Let the threes fly. They can really shoot the ball. And look at their tents. Look at Frank ready to go on defense. Macy Alexander in there pulling 
all kinds of minutes tonight with a depleted front court. Now McGee muscles in again and gets that to go. Macy Alexander is an unsung hero tonight, folks. She has been playing all game long with both Jordan McMahon and Chantel Harden, her front court teammates. And look at McGee deliver a third one in a row, and now she is starting to put on a show. Kendall McGee, that's her seventh point in a row. Two twos, and then that three. I like both these teams. It's gonna be fun to watch the Red Knights as they go into the playoffs this year. They've gotta have high hopes. Now Schmitz comes in with the steal, draws the foul. It's gonna go against number four, Sydney Friedley, the sophomore. That stops the clock with 9.01 to go. That'll be Friedley's first, team fifth, and Park only has one team foul. Last half, they were in team foul trouble as they, I think, had eight fouls. And this half, it's the opposite on the team foul totals. Now Olsen will check back in. Frank will have a seat. She played some good minutes also with Massey. Isabella Miller checks back in. Schmitz is at the line. Macy Alexander, the iron woman out there tonight, playing all the minutes. She gets back on defense against Olsen, gets her hand on the ball. Olsen comes in, can't get it to go. Great defense by Macy Alexander, and that is a great play by her. It won't show up on the stat sheets, but that's what I'm talking about. Right there, her minutes she's putting in tonight. Heroic. Schmitz can't get that to go in and out. Now McGee looking for Olsen with the alley-oop. I don't know if they were going for the slam. That would have been something, but there was Macy Alexander getting on defense to interrupt that play. Two great defensive plays by Macy Alexander. Awesome job. Alexander, a senior, along with Jordan and Harden, or Jordan McMahon and Harden. She's gotta be missing her senior teammates out there playing these last few games. Hopefully Chantel Harden can get back before the end of the year. I haven't gotten any update on how she's feeling or whether that's possible, but possibly. I don't know if Jordan McMahon's gonna be back. She's got that boot on as we watch McGee. as she's now scored nine in a row, putting on the show here. She really is something else out there. Kendall McGee. It's not gonna be long, I think, before the rest of the state knows her name, just like Olivia Olson. Okay, back, oh, travel call on polishing. 7.56 to go, Bishop now checks in. Olson will have a seat along with, no, Olson's gonna stay in, but McGee will come down. She just scored nine. That might be it for her for tonight. And now Fred Lee, Friedley comes into the front court. Olson on her left. Now to Kastner, Olsen, looking to the right side, spin moves, pulls up her dribble, finds Friedley on the outside. That three-point shot off the rim, out of bounds. They're discussing who it went off of. I'm not sure who it was, and they're gonna say it went off an Oriole. And Polishin will have a seat. Ellie Frank back in as we watch this shot go off the back rim. Ooh, did it go off Polishin? Tough call, it may have. Now Olsen inbound underneath. Spates came over and committed the foul. And look at the sportsmanship by Stacy Spates going right over to pull up Olsen. That's impressive right there. Love to see that sportsmanship. Okay, Olsen at the line. She'll get two with 7.33 to go. First one goes in. And it is a 35 point lead right now, I believe. No, not quite. Yeah, 35, no, 36 now. Thirty-six point lead with 7.29 to go. That shot in and out for Miller. Now here comes Bishop. We might be going to running time here. I'm not sure. I think there is a rule. Now Friedley Olsen stops from free throw line. Extended off the back rim. Rebound Spates. Great rebound. She's got her head up looking. Oh, and Miller and her just a little miscommunication in the backcourt turnover. 
I attribute that to a lack of playing together. And we are now running time. No stoppage on that uh, out of bounds play. And that's by virtue of the rule. 35 points differential calls for running time. Now Olsen drives the lane. Orioles should have nothing to feel bad about. I think they played maybe their best game tonight that I've seen all year. Now underneath, what a pass. But look at Macy Alexander get over to thwart that. That's her third great defensive play in a row. It still ended up in a shot on the rebound, but that's a third one in a row by Macy Alexander. Now Frank comes in, gets in trouble. Bishop takes it away, and she's got a breakaway, and she'll lay it in easily with 6.16 to go. All right, now here comes Ellie Frank, the seventh grader, brings it up. Now Massey, Miller, they do that weave. You know, the University of Minnesota men's team used to do that a lot when I was a kid growing up. It seemed like they had an offense that would do that panned it off at the top of the key. It always looked pretty cool. And the Orioles, I think it works well for a guard-centered offense, which is what they are right now. Now here comes Olsen on the miss with the rebound in the front court. Bishop traveled. Yep, she did. She dragged her foot. She's protesting it. It was a little herky-jerky there, and I think she dragged it ever. She was a little bit of a hesitation, and she dragged her foot before she let the pass go. And now Macy Alexander will get a well-deserved break, as well as Stacy Spates. Now Frank, along with Massey, Schmitz, Polishin, and Miller is in the game still. I mistakenly said she wasn't. Now the bounce pass underneath. Miller able to fight it away and get it in. What a play by Isabella Miller. She fought for that ball and almost got stolen. And even after she fought for it, she was able to have the wherewithal, put it up and off the glass and in. Boy, that could have been a travel. She's been doing that a lot tonight. Might be helpful for her to look at some film and really figure that out. I have felt that about a couple other plays. I mean that with all the good heartedness in the world. All right, now Schmitz. Into the front court, Massey fakes it, now takes it herself and goes down and that could be a travel as well, I was about to say. I looked for the confirmation, the official agreed with me, or I agreed with him. So turnover against the Orioles and now checking in for the Red Knights, that's number 10 accepting the inbounds pass. That is Isabella Jakub, the sophomore getting some varsity minutes. She's got to be thrilled to be out there. It's a whole different level than JV and sophomore for sure. And it's great experience to feel that intensity. Now underneath, getting a rebound again and again is Sydney Mackenzie Wells, I should say, the senior, getting that to go, showing great perseverance. Now the crossover dribble by Schmitz comes in, holds her ground, and lays it in. Schmitz still showing great energy out there on the offensive and defensive end. Now at the top of the key, Friedley. And Bishop lets it go short of the rim. Saving attempt by Friedley Whistle. And that was out of bounds off the Red Knights. Now checking in for the Red Knights number 11, Bella Stevenson Schimmick, a sophomore, getting some minutes here late. And Evelyn Schmitz brings the ball up. We're in running time. 3.14 to go. 3.11. And Polishin takes the delivery and delivers the three-point shot off the back rim. Rebound now into the hands of number five, Bishop. But getting that rebound was number 10 for the Red Knights, Isabella Jakub. So she'll get in the scoring column just with that rebound. And now underneath, great defense by... Mackenzie Wells as she tries to wrestle that ball away. And possession will stay with the Red Knights. Clock continues to wind down. Now checking in for the Red Knights, number 13, Ashley Scram, a sophomore. Getting some important varsity minutes as well. Now, Wismer drives the key, comes in, and a whistle from up on top. All going to be on 32, Macy Alexander. That'll be team fourth. Hold on. Or is that on Miller? 
I guess the foul is on Miller, 33, and I think that's her fifth personal, so she may have fouled out, is what I just heard the PA announcer indicate. Now throw in for the Red Knights, 152 remaining. Clock continues to wind down, and that's a travel. All right, turnover against the Red Knights. Orioles will have a throw in. Clock continues to run, 1.35 to go. If you're a Red Knight hockey fan and you're watching tonight and listening, we will be bringing Red Knight hockey tomorrow night, although it won't be streaming live, but it'll be on YouTube the next day. So please check it out. Promises to be a great game against Edina as Ellie Frank drives the lane. I should say Ellie Frank tied her up on that. And it'll be a throw in. So good defense by the seventh grader, number 11, Ellie Frank. Now the throw in. Pass up top to number 22 is checked in. That's Audrey Pohl, a sophomore. And now the shot taken by Jakub off the front of the rim. Polish in with Schmitz. Pass a little behind her, forces her to turn back around. Now underneath the Alexander can't get it to go. Rebound into the hands of number 11, Bella Stevenson Schimmick. 40 seconds remaining. Now number 10, Jakub, to number 11, Schimmick, Stevenson Schimmick. Now Friedley, Wismer drives, got tangled up a little bit by Frank, good defense by Frank. Rebound, Macy Alexander, 25 seconds. Schmitz with the ball into the front court. 22 seconds remaining, Polish in. Alexander sets a pick, Polish in to Alexander. Alexander takes the shot from just inside the three point line, short off the rim. Rebound into the hands of 13, Ashley Scram. Scram gives it up to the right side to Stevenson Schimmick. And the shot taken by number 14, Mira Wismer, the ninth grader, gets it to go. And the clock has wound down. And that signifies the end of our match here. Our score, 90 to 50. The Red Knights go to 17 and six. Park falls to seven and 14. So for Paul Broden, our producer, and Leah on camera, I'm Robert Christensen. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again.